Margaret, the mother of John the Baptist, was the first to address her as the mother of my Lord. The first Christians called her Mary, mother of God, without hesitation because of the scriptural precedent and it seems logical that if Jesus is God and Mary is the mother of Jesus, then that makes Mary the mother of God. The question of Mary was the first dogma that portrayed Mary as the mother of God. This title is said to have arisen in the devotional usage, probably in Alexandria, sometimes in the 10th and 4th century. This title is logically deduced from the doctrine of the full deity of Christ which was established as a dogma during the 4th century at the Council of Ephesus. The church celebrates Mary today as the mother of God, Theotokos, translated as God's bearer or mother of the incarnate God because of the important role she played in the salvific redemption of mankind as the mother of God. Though the church celebrates Mary as mother of God, yet at the heart of today's feast is the divine revelation of the apostatic union of the person of Christ, fully divine and fully human, in the mystery of the incarnation. To explain this better, the church teaches that there are three persons in one God, God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. God the Son was incarnate and born of the Virgin Mary through the power of the Holy Spirit. The fact of the birth of the second person of the Holy Trinity named Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us, one in being, consubstantial with the Father, and true God from true God, entered this world taking on human flesh and human soul is what we celebrate at Christmas and that makes Mary the mother of God. In the 5th century, Nestorus, Bishop of Constantinople, raised a controversial argument on the motherhood of Mary as mother of God. He rather said that Mary should be addressed as mother of Jesus and not mother of God for divinity cannot be born of human. And if Mary is called mother of God, then she is the originator of God. So at the heart of these objections was the objection to the unity of Christ's two natures. The church, then led by Pope Celestine I and St. Cyril of Alexandria disagreed. As Cyril pointed out that a mother gives birth to a person, not a nature. Mary gave birth to Jesus Christ, who was and is a divine person. Mary did not originate or generate God. She did bear him in her womb and gave birth to him. She was God's mother. This was addressed at the Council of Ephesus 431 AD. There, the church rejected the heretic teaching of Nestorus that Jesus is of two persons. The church declares that Jesus is one divine person with two natures, his mother's human nature and his father's divine nature. Mary did not give Jesus his divine nature or his divine personhood those he possessed from all eternity as the only begotten Son of the Father. Church Father explained that though in his person are united both a human nature and a divine nature, yet these natures of his are not fused. Mary, in being called Mother of God, expresses a truth that must be stated in order to protect an essential truth about Christ. She is the virginal mother of God, the link between her son's humanity and divinity. She is the sign that he is both God and man. Mary did not just give flesh to him, 
She gave birth to a whole person, Jesus Christ, who is both God and man. That is what we profess each time we say the Apostle Creed. As we begin the new year with the intercession of Mary, Mother of God, we pray her to pray with us and pray for us as we pray for world peace, that we may find peace in our world today. May our Lady, Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Happy New Year 